good evening a warm welcome to iset webinar on a seismic movement magnitude scale which is jointly organized by indian society of earthquake technology roorkee chapter and department of earthquake engineering iit roorkee this webinar will be delivered by dr ranjit das before i hand over this session to him i would like to briefly present his short bio dr ranjit das is an internationally recognized researcher and industry experts expert in the areas of earthquake engineering and developer of a new earthquake magnitude scale dr das is currently working as assistant professor at universitat catolica del norte chile he is also a researcher of national research center for integrated natural disaster management chile he received phd degree in seismology from the department of earthquake engineering iit roorkee he has experience and expertise in the areas of earthquake size earthquake catalog and seismic hazard assessment he was among the 50 who received the national doctoral fellowship from the all india council for technical education in the year 2009 being a life member of indian society of earthquake technology dr das has made 23 peer reviewed high impact factor scientific publications he also made several basic algorithms useful for science and engineering Dr Ranjit Das is also serving as an associate editor of world's oldest geophysical journal Journal of Geophysics with this brief introduction i welcome professor ranjit das and request him to make his presentation followed by his presentation there will be panel discussions professor ranjit das please you can share and yeah. start presentation uh thank you professor jaka for introduce me uh i'll give uh, some you know uh, some explanation some uh, uh, and uh, works on my our uh, on our works that is a seismic moment scale i'll explain how we have done this works and what is the importance of this scale so i will try to represent with my slides so i'm i'm now sharing the slides so this slide is visible yes yes uh, uh, yeah uh, good afternoon all of uh, all, the, all all the participants so and good afternoon sir professor wash and professor ml sharma sir and professor jaka and <clears throat> so in this seminar i will present my our works the seismic moment scale and this is called dash magnitude scale so before introducing this scale or before i will explain this what is the importance of the scale what is the basic background of the earthquake scales so i am a assist already professor jaka <coughs> introduced this i am a assistant professor of university catolica del chile also a researcher of disaster management center which is conducted from pontificia university catolica del chile i am also an associate editor of journal of geophysics so <clears throat> i'm starting my works explain so yeah so uh, actually earthquakes occurs all over the world you know <clears throat> uh, all over the world so Uh, mainly in the flat boundaries the bigger earthquakes come so we <clears throat> and in himalaya in himalaya there are so many big earthquakes come so and this causes uh, casualties damages uh, to the economy of a country and therefore it is important to understand the earthquakes and to <clears throat> to build up a earthquake resistant building so <clears throat> in art uh, for for designing earthquake resistant building we have to calculate the hazard vulnerability and exposures so for doing all this type of analysis of you know earthquake engineering or seismology or any other ge uh, geophysical uh, 
So we need to understand the earthquake size. So what is the bigger, what is the amount, what is the, uh, how many, how much big the earthquake is. So th uh, that is called magnitudes. So for the, therefore the earthquake magnitude is very important for any analysis for doing hazard assessment, risk assessment, or maybe, you know, uh, any, any geophysical studies, the earthquake magnitude is the main parameter to represent the research. So therefore, therefore we hammering this part, whether this is an appropriate scale, or whether the existing scales are measuring the earthquakes are appropriate or not. We are doing a rigorous exercise for this uh, uh, magnitudes of earthquake. So this is the scale actually we have published in BSSA. It is a top downloaded paper in 2020. Uh, there are five papers also. <clears throat> so earthquakes are basically you know, uh, determined by magnitudes or by intensity. So <clears throat> magnitudes give you the size of the earthquakes, uh, how much big the earthquake is, and intensity give you the, you also by the intensity, you can also measure the earthquake. What is the degree of shaking of the earthquakes at different places? So magnitude is the best for representing the earthquake size because intensity is decreases with respect to distance. Uh, there are many uh, so earthquakes are classified with uh, with uh, with, earth, with earthquake magnitudes. So if we have a bigger earthquake or great earthquakes, we call if it is a magnitude of earthquakes is more than eight, and we call this the major or large earthquakes if it is coming between seven and eight. So and moderate if it is coming in around five to seven and small we've called three to five. And the micro earthquakes is called one to three and ultra micro earthquakes is 1.0. This is a convention given by Hagiwara in 1964. So this is the uh, actual classification on the basis of the magnitudes. If it is bigger than eight, then we call it is a great earthquakes. So there are so many big earthquakes uh, in the planet uh, probably in every year there is a big one earthquakes in this planet. So uh, these magnitudes, you know, from the very beginning, so in, from 1935, this uh, actually earthquake science is very uh, new science actually. In 1935, Richter's uh, first uh, develop is, you know, uh, mechanism to, by which one can measure the earthquake size. So that is called local magnitudes. So and also called Richter magnitude scale, which is published in 1935 in BSSA. So this scale basically defined for Southern California to understand how the seismicity of that area. So after in one year, then he found that the local scale we have developed. So if an earthquake storm is a bigger area, the longer area, so this actually scale does not satisfy. So then he developed another scale called surface wave magnitudes uh, that is called MS. But MS also have some limitation because it cannot properly deported the uh, uh, deeper earthquakes. So then he developed in 45 after 10 years or nine years after that, he developed another magnitude called body waves magnitude. That is in the initially it was M capital B, but at present we have M small b. So in this way, the magnitudes are the, uh, improving or modifying. So after 30 years of Gutenberg, uh, Gutenberg developing the body wave magnitudes, uh, Hans Kanamuri comes and so uh, told that uh, and suggested that these scales uh, are having some limitation, then they develop another scale, which is called moment magnitude scale. In 79, it is actually published. Then another scale comes in 1986 in JGR. This is called energy magnitude scale because uh, many people suggested that only one scale cannot represent the earthquake size properly. So therefore on the basis of the ground velocity, uh, this energy magnitude scale is developed by Choi and Boatwright. So this is energy magnitude. This energy magnitude generally reported by any IC website. So in 2019, we develop another scale, which is called dash magnitude scale and represented by MWG, also published in BSSA. So there are some limitations between the different magnitudes. Uh, you see this uh, graph for um, how this moment, this is a, hang, a heat on curves, uh, 
probably 1986, it has been given uh, to make the co correlation between the different magnitudes. So MWC in this graph, there is no saturation, but MB has a saturation, ML has a saturation, M capital B has saturation, MS has also saturation after eight or 8.2. So, but MW is not saturated. So, so therefore after 79, uh, everybody started to apply the MW scale, the uh, moment magnitude scale. So this figure shows that how different magnitudes of earthquake size actually uh, have having the limitations. The body waves is called MB and local wave is called ML. And uh, this is MB body wave, this is surface wave. So this all the magnitude scale having some limitation except MW. So, uh, yeah. So now I'm trying to say what is Richter scale. So Richter in 1935 first proposed a scale called, called the Richter scale. And this equation, uh, the, the scale was given by uh, Richter in 1935 is ML equal to log of A minus log of A naught, where A is the maximum trace amplitude recorded in a standard Wood Anderson seismogram. Date has natural period of 0.8 seconds. And A0 is the zero of the local magnitude, arbitrary fix as 0 0.001. That means at 100 kilometer epicentral distance, you will get this much of amplitudes. So this is the actual Richter scale developed for Southern California. So many developed countries, all Canada or some other developed countries develop their own scale, local scale. You know, it is important to understand that Richter scale having its own, you know, uh, uh, correction factor for uh, own, own tectonics. So, uh, so Canada having developed their own scales and other countries also develop, but I think in India still using this uh, Richter scales. Uh, so I, the correction factor has to be improved. So these scales, although we use, but we have to in, in, uh, incorporate some correction with this scale so that it can properly give the information of tectonics. So this is developed for Southern California. And how to measure this, how to use this Richter scale when an earthquake comes, a signal goes to seismograms. So this gives us the uh, P waves and this is the S waves. If we give the difference between the P and S, so we'll get some uh, time, uh, time interval. So we get 24 seconds. So within the 24 seconds, we find uh, this is the time gaps. And what is the maximum amplitude? We see this is the maximum amplitude of the signal is 23 mm. So then on the, this is the graphs given by the Richter. So this is the amplitudes of the earthquake signal. And this is 23. And this is another thing, so epicentral distance from the graph we have to calculate. And this is the S minus P time gaps, 23. We have to make a, make a straight line from this point to this point, and then where there is an intersection of the magnitude scale, that is the magnitude by the graphical representation. So, and, and then after that, this uh, Richter also gave the body wave magnitudes. So uh, this after some years, so it is revised with respect to time. So MB equal to log of 10A, a maximum amplitude with respect to time by divided by time, and some attenuation function of uh, P waves uh, <clears throat> given by the Gutenberg and Richter in his, uh, uh, in his table. And then, and subtract uh, 3.0. So with this uh, information, maximum amplitude with respect to time, we have to calculate the body waves of a system of earthquakes. So uh, this is uh, next, we are coming to surface wave. Surface wave magnitudes basically give the information of the surface. And it also basically uh, initially defined by uh, Gutenberg and Richter in 1936. And then it has modified by different people. In 1962, Benny Cattle developed another scale called the, uh, so Benny Cattle modified this uh, surface wave magnitudes like the, with some correction factor. So this is used, this scale is used by ISC in a different way or any IC in a different way. ISC, ISC use the uh, vertical uh, component of the seismograph or any IC use the vertical and uh, uh, components with 10 to 60 seconds windows. 
So, and this A is the maximum horizontal component of any time period and that is the epicentral distance in the kilometer. So these all so body waves, surface waves, local magnitudes, local magnitudes are not reported by ISC or NEIC. So this surface and body waves are reported by uh, international agency ISC and NEIC. So now uh, we are coming to the another scale that is called body uh, moment magnitude scale, because we already said that this scale having limitations, so this does not serve our purpose if a big earthquake comes. So therefore, Hans Kanamori defined another scale that called moment magnitude scale. So in order to understand the moment magnitude scale, we need to understand what is seismic moment. The seismic moment is calculated the shear modulus, with the area and this location displacement during the ruptures. With the help of this, we can estimate the seismic moment. Also, we can, uh, by the spectral analysis, also we can define uh, the moment from the spectral analysis also. Uh, yeah. So then uh, I'm trying to show you this, uh, some moments, uh, seismic moments and fault areas of some important earthquakes. So here it is 1960 Chile earthquakes. It has around the uh, length is around 800,000 kilometer and it's width around uh, 180 kilometers. So this is the information uh, for different earthquakes of seismic moments and fault ruptures for different earthquakes. So, uh, yeah. Now these seismic moments, one can estimate from the uh, Harvard seismic, Harvard a uh, wave site, if you give the latitude and longitude, one can easily estimate the, uh, uh, one can easily got the seismic moment or different type of magnitude also, MB, MS, uh, and the fall plane information also. So if you, uh, if one give the, uh, in the, this, this wave site, globalcmt.org, they will give the, that asks the latitude and longitude. Once insert this information, you will get the moment of any earthquakes, seismic moment. So this is actually the background about the, all the earthquakes, how the, how the different magnitudes works for measuring the earthquake size. And now we, uh, I'm telling about the background of MW scale. So the MW scale basically derived from the surface wave magnitudes. Although it is, although it is an equation of two by three log of M naught minus 10.7, but the background of this scale is totally dependent on the surface waves. Because two by three minus two by three log of M naught minus 10.7, this two by three minus 10.7 is coming from the surface waves uh, formulations. So I'll, uh, so first, you know, Gutenberg and Richter give a unified magnitude scale, magnitudes relation with respect to MS, that is M equal to 2.5.63 M. This is the first equation given for, given by uh, M capital B and, and MS. This is the, uh, for, combi for, for converting this MB and capital MS to, to one magnitude that is called unified magnitudes and they make a relationship between the unified magnitudes and M with these formulations. And, and this, uh, he also derive a scale, uh, derive a formulation between the, uh, for between the unified magnitudes and the energy with this. So when this, uh, see equation one, if we put in the equation two, then we will get a equation, third equation three. And this is a very, very famous equation for earthquake engineering that is log es is equal to 1.5 ms 11.8 so this is this this equation is derived from the this equation equation 1 and equation 2 so equation, equation 1 is connected between the unified, unified magnitudes and m uh, ms and then the second one is connected to the energy and the unified magnitudes if we substitute the equation 1 to in the equation 2 we will get equation 3 so now what Hanks and Kanamori did, Hanks and Kanamori did the, use these equations for entire mathematical, entire, entire, entire mechanism is based on these equations. So log ES is equal to 1.5 MS or 11.8. So this, uh, this now what he has, uh, for deriving the MW scale, he used this ES is equal to stress drop by modulus, shear modulus into M naught. So, and, Considering this stress drop by shear modulus, 
is 1 by 2 e to the power 4 into m naught. So this is a constant term. What he considered the stress drop and the shear modulus part makes uh, considered the same, uh, consider, uh, consider a constant value. So he con considered a constant value and put this in this formula. Equation three, log of energy into surface waves. This, this famous formula, uh, putting this value of equation five in the equation three. So this equation five is energy versus moment and which is, an, which is a mechanical formulation that is coming by uh, considering the assumption of constant assumption by stress drop and the shear modulus. So he constant he considered the uh, shear modulus you know constant value also the stress drop a constant value so then he find another constant value and put this value into this so then what is uh, interestingly he find a equation log of m not is equal to 1.5 m and 16.1 and surprisingly this equation is also very much similar with this equation of surface waves and log m not given by some uh, poor k and borrow and some peoples and this equation is also very much similar with the local local, local earthquakes that is uh, in, uh, between the moment and the uh, and the local earthquakes uh, equation 8 so this equation 6 is very much similar with the californian earthquakes and the surface wave between the moment therefore we found that this equation is having very good sense and now he, he reversed the equation six, just, just uh, reverse the equation six, bringing in the right hand side 1.5, then he makes this MW is equal to two by three log of M naught minus 10.7. 10, 10 so this is the equation given by Hanks Kanamuri and considering the equation one and equation two, putting in equation three, which is a equation for energy versus magnitude. In this equation, M naught is not the observed seismic moment, this is the uh, actual, it is a moment, but this equation is coming from by putting the substitution value, ES is equal to one by two into 10 to the power fours. So, so this M, this equation is uh, having a substitution, uh, having not, uh, do, do not have the direct seismic uh, moment values. Also based upon this log of ES is equal to 1.5 MS plus 11.8, and mainly on the Southern California regions, 1.5 ml plus 16.0. Also, the constant uh, stress drop, which is for uh, which is which is for considering for bigger uh, only considered for the bigger earthquakes, shallow earthquakes. So he finally give these equations and try to correlate with the different earthquakes of Southern California. So here in this uh, in this table, it shows that this is the M is uh, the earthquakes magnitude which is derived by the Kanamori formula, M, capital M, only M. And he tried to look at how much different from the, from the MS and ML, mainly ML is all from Southern California. So he found that it is a very closely connected, this capital M, M, MS and ML. Similarly, for the bigger earthquakes, he tried to connect with the surface waves magnitudes, M and M. And he found this capital M that is coming from his Hanks and Kanamori equation and the MS is very good connection for the higher magnitudes. Also for the lower magnitude is very closely connected. Then he suggested to use this equation for, uh, for, for, uh, for the globe, for specifically for bigger earthquakes, greater than 7.5. So now I have, uh, we have some uh, pr pr problems with these scales. So I will try to say how, 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 the, how are the problems in these scales. So this is basically MW is mainly based on surface wave magnitude. Therefore do not represent the source appropriately. How it is surface wave magnitudes? See, this is ES is equal to MS. This is surface wave magnitudes completely based on this equation. So this equation is mainly based on surface wave magnitudes, therefore do not represent the source appropriately. It is not that only that we are talking about this, this not appropriately represent the surface wave. Professor Bowman and many, many other people reported that these earthquakes having limitation to represent the source properly. 
then development and validation of this scale only covers the Southern California tectonic and does not represent the different tectonic of the globe. If you go back and you see all the earthquakes are coming from the smaller earthquakes are Californian, uh, mainly. Smaller is California and bigger is seven point more than four eight five. Then some extent it is from out of the southern. Uh, also see the seismic moment and for the small, some large California earthquakes. So all are Californian earthquakes here in comparisons. So development is also based on this is uh, these equations and used for the uh, develop in case of development it is also used the California earthquakes. This is one point five ml is California earthquakes. So uh, this equation also validation is also having the Californian earthquakes. So what we can say this MW scale only cover the Southern California earthquakes and tectonics. So does not represent the global tectonics. So because if we change the place to place, the tectonics are different. So we'll get different equations. So MW scale is valid for bigger earthquakes at global level. More greater than 7.5, it is valid for uh, uh, most of the world earthquakes. In general, uh, in general, in any regional catalog, most of the earthquakes are smaller and intermediate. So therefore, inconsistency definitely caused by due to the MW scale because MW scale is valid for bigger earthquakes. Professor Hanks and Kanamori also said, this is for greater than 7.5 because he validated for greater than 7.5. So less than 7.5, he is not, he is concerned for the Southern California. So it does not give for smaller and intermediate earthquakes for entire globes. So it is valid for global earthquakes, bigger earthquakes. And MW scale was derived for upper crustal earthquakes and applicable for large earthquakes. So this is derived for upper crustal earthquakes means, well, uh, if we go back, uh, if we go back, you will get this, you know, equation four, this stress drop. His stress drop he considered for the upper and shear modulus is also considered for the upper crust. So shallow earthquakes. So therefore, this uh, it is also applicable for, and, and it, since it is based on surface waves, it is only valid for shallow earthquakes, not for applicable for entire crust and applicable for large earthquakes. So it is uh, uh, MW scale overestimate the lower earthquake magnitudes and underestimate the bigger earthquake magnitudes, which is uh, reported by many other peoples. Also, we also explain in our different publications. So MW is formulated based on substitution rather than directly observed seismic moment. So what we did, the M MW is formulated on the basis of substitution. Substitution, substitution means if you go back, uh, we will see this this m naught is coming direct e, e, the correction between the es and m naught is based upon some equations constant and this is coming from a substitutions so if this on equation three if we put the equation four we, we substitute the equation four in equation three so this so so uh, so mw scale is formulated based on substitution not on the directly observed seismic moment so there is no correlation between the seismic moment and other magnitudes with the direct observation. They have some substitution of considering some constant values, they develop these scales. Because the MW scale is derived based on long period surface wave magnitudes, since it is based on the seismic moment and the surface wave magnitudes, it is not a good estimator for high frequency or strong motion amplitudes, measurement, which are useful for uh, potentially shake, shake damage of present earthquakes. So MW scale was derived by substituting a constant term, which I already talked, uh, that is 5 into 10 to the power minus 5 is equal to sigma 2e, the Gutenberg equation, this. It is important to note this stress drop varies generally from a few bars to 125, but he considered some x constant value. So this variability of stress drop is significant. Therefore, if we change the stress drop, we will get the different values of this uh, different uh, from the MW scales. So, so this is another limitations. <clears throat> Consider the constant terms in developing this, you know, uh, this scale. And this uh, also does not have a good statistical agreement with the observed magnitudes. If we see this, but, uh, but in the development of MW scale, he tried to compare the uh, MS and ML, so observed magnitudes. Whatever the moment magnitude gives, he tried to compare with the MS and M MS and ML. 
So now we, uh, if we compare this MW scale with MS, MB, ME, we don't find any good co correlation between uh, 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 correlation or very good statistical agreement with the MW scale. So now this is an attempt to cover up the limitation of the existing scales. Uh, because many people suggested that yeah we only one scale do not represent the entire earthquake scenario so there should be some other scales so uh, we try to think on the di direction so that we can at least remove some of the problems of mw scale so previously the scale was derived on the surface waves considering the surface wave magnitudes so now we consider the puf first few cycle of the pufs of the magnitudes so here is the, uh, we consider the, uh, not the surface waves for the body wave magnitudes only. So uh, how we derive these scales, we consider the first few cycles of, uh, we consider the first few cycles of uh, P waves and consider the observed seismic moment. We also consider the radiated energy of seismic radiated energy and consider, we consider the global seismicity while we uh, analyze our, uh, the results. And then we develop a correlation between the seismic moment also in the first few cycles of P waves. And finally, we come to this MWG equal to log of M naught by 1.36 minus 12.68. This is a rough, you know, how we develop this scale. So I try to find out uh, now, I'll try to say how, how this scale has been developed. So for developing this scale, we consider not the specific, you know, Seismic specific tectonics. We consider entire globe data, seismic moment data. It has considered 25,000 data uh, during the period of 1976 to 2007. Also, we consider the body wave magnitudes around 3 lakhs data and MS magnitudes around 80,000 data from ISC. And also, we consider ME1361 events from NEIC. So we also consider the energy magnitude and energy radiated energy of three directly observed from the instrument. We consider 361 events recorded by Choi and Butright. And then we estimate the seismic moment from the energy. And after that, uh, we make a relationships between the moment and the body wave magnitudes. So whatever the magnitudes we collected from the ISC, suppose body wave magnitudes, uh, and correlate with the seismic moment of the GCMT, we found a relationship like this, which is uh, we are considering the seismic solution up to the seven. But here we, uh, yeah. So then uh, see, this is the equation log of M naught equal to 1.36 MB minus 17.24. So now uh, MB has a limit if it, a bigger earthquake comes more than seven, it will not give a correct results. So if now, if we, you know, uh, if we can estimate that moment directly from an, an instruments for the bigger earthquakes, uh, then we can, it is possible to make the, these magnitudes unsaturated. So then what we will do, what we have done, we, we just reverse these equations. So that directly we get the moment and estimate the magnitudes, which will not, then MB saturation problem will not be there. That uh, idea is just, uh, uh, just uh, this MB, if we put the directly independent moment and put the independent moment there, then M, whatever the magnitudes will be there will not be saturated. So this is the, uh, you know, this is the concept behind this, how to get from the uh, seismic moment uh, and, and body wave magnitudes to just uh, reversing the equations. We, we found that this equation does not say suited for the bigger earthquakes. Then this functions, uh, this scale is, 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 is validated with the seismic radiated energy and observed magnitude scales. Once we found this scale is heavily close, very close with the seismic radiated energy and the other observed magnitudes for different parts of the world, then we say this scale can be a proper representation for earthquake size for entire world. So thus I'm showing here, so how this scale, how this scale, this existing scale, moment magnitude scale is not very close to the observed scales. 
So this is the data set we consider for MB for MS for entire globe, not for Southern California. We consider the entire globe. So if we use the scale, this is the scale of Hanks Kanamori, Hanks Kanamori scale. If we consider the scale, then we found this scale is not fitting very well with the with the with the uh, for the global seismicity. It may close with the uh, Southern California, but not at all for global seismicity with respect to MS as well as MB. So serious disagreement with the MB as well as MS. So if in case of MS, it is actually if we go up around uh, more than you know uh, seven point five, it is more or less similar. But before that, it is not matching with the existing MS or existing MS with MW. So this is this figure clearly indicate that the existing MW scale is not very much match with the surface we have magnitude, also the body of magnitudes. So this is a critical problem because development of this scale was best that whatever the magnitudes develop, it level, it represents the other magnitude also. It close very close with the other magnitude also. But in case of global scenario, these things has not happened. So uh, we uh, compare it with the observed seismic moment. Next, we try to compare the with the seismic moment. We have the observed seismic moment data from the GCMT and try to connect from the MB and make a relationships and try to connect with how it is uh, very how it is close to the seismic moment. We found the existing scale MW is not also very much close to the seismic moment. If we convert from one MB to uh, MB to MW or MB to M MWG, this dark black is indicates the uh, dash magnitude scale and and the other one is called uh, is from the Hanks and Kanamori. So dark dash magnitude scale is the black, hard black. So which is passing through the middle and the other one is not passing through the middle in both the cases. So this shows that uh, this existing scale MW is not also matching with the seismic observed seismic moment because uh, during the time when it was developed, it was, we do not have sufficient seismic moment. So therefore they developed uh, it from the uh, others, uh, considering some other substitution and assumptions. They, they give the equation for seismic moment magnitudes, uh, considering the some, uh, based on some constant assumptions. So therefore it is not matching with the observed seismic moment. So now we compare the, uh, so this uh, again, we saw from the, if we have the log moment, if we have the seismic moment and try to correlate with the different magnitudes, so if we have the uh, seismic moments, uh, for uh, we have uh, around 27,000 seismic moments. So from the seismic moments, we calculate the uh, our scales, also the uh, uh, also the uh, Hanks Kanamori scales. We found this both the cases. It is very 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 good 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 approach good clo closeness in case of MB, also in case of MS. For especially in the range of, uh, for especially in the range of uh, 25 to 29, you know, uh, seismic moment, or maybe if in the sense of MS, it is it is six to more than six. It is very closely connected with the uh, our scale is very closely connected with the MS magnitudes. In case of MB, our scale is very very closely connected with less than 5.5. Uh, in case of body wave magnitudes. So if we consider that uh, the earthquakes or body wave magnitudes, if it is less than 5.5, if, if you have an earthquake magnitudes less than 5.5, then you find the moment magnitude which is coming from our scale will be very close to the other magnitudes the, that is body wave magnitudes. In case of MS, if you found some surface wave magnitudes more than six, and then estimate the, and then compare the moment magnitude scale by uh, Hanks and Kanamori and also us DM scale, then we found that the more than six, this scale is also give a more, very close connection, very good uh, agreement in case of MS for bigger earthquakes. So this, uh, this indicates, and also, uh, also we compare with the energy magnitudes. So we have some 1361 data and from the local magnitude uh, seismic moment, we try to connect with, uh, uh, compare with the energy magnitudes what are available in the, in the NEIC data. We found this, this DM scale, that is the uh, uh, blue one is very much close with the energy magnitude also. So 
next uh, okay this uh, scale is very much closely connected with the uh, uh, with the seismic observed magnitudes also uh, we have uh, 361 seismic seismic uh, radiated events from choyan botrai he independently estimated the velocity uh, estimated the energy of 361 events then we use these energy events and calculate it from the moment we calculated the energy by both this way, by in our scales, also in Hank Scanamori scale. We found this, the DM scale, that is this black one, is very, very in the middle of all this observed data. So this clearly indicates that this scale is very close uh, to the energy magnitudes also. But this MW scale is not very, uh, not very good uh, agreement in catch of uh, energy also. The reason behind this at that moment, uh, we don't have sufficient data for, uh, uh, for deriving this, you know, energy. So there was this uh, assumption of some uh, on, of some data sets. Therefore, energy magnitudes in case of comparing energy scales, we found there is a disagreement of MW. So what if uh, so? Therefore, uh, since this scale is very much closer to the observed energy of 361 observed energy all over the globes, and uh, see uh, this is a table which indicates that how close this uh, this is the MWG MWG, and this is MW. This MWG and MW is estimated from the log of moment, and from this W MWG we estimated the ES. By using this log ES is equal to 1.5 m into 11.8. 11, uh, 11 using this equation, we estimated this log energy with uh, using the MWZ also MW. We found this uh, this log of ES is very close to the log of ES. So we, uh, in most of the cases, around it, uh, 85 percent data, so we have found this very close uh, to this energy, this scales. So then we found uh, we, uh, we make some you know statistical test. So how whether this MWG scales uh, is actually statistically valid or not? We found that we reject the null hypothesis. This MWG is uh, uh, the mean of the MW. Uh, the we, we calculated the moment from by using this. Uh, we calculate the MW from the moment, also MWG from the moment, and see how whether there is a difference between these two or not is from the mean and variances. Then we reject the null hypothesis that that is that that, that this is not this is the same. We reject that hypothesis. So does it in, in this way it is statistically valid this MW scale is significantly significantly vary from MW scale mainly in the uh, lower magnitude lower and intermediate magnitude range. So if we now compare some bigger earthquakes in catch of uh, uh, bigger earthquakes all over the world. So if we see that uh, Tohoku earthquake in 11 March 2011, it gives uh, 9.1 uh, one in MW scale and 9.2 in MW G scales. So there is a so the point one difference in the bigger earthquakes. If we go ahead beyond that, these differences will be more. So in the intermediate steps, it is also point one, but in case of 8.8 .8 magnitudes. 8.8 uh, .8 magnitudes if the MW is 8.8, .8, but our case is also 8.8. .8. But in the higher, it was 9.1, is reported 9.1, we reported 9.2. So if we see this Tohoku earthquakes, which is 9.1, is devastating a lot. But uh, our scale represent much more better than this scale because it was a huge devastation. Uh, in case of uh, smaller earthquakes, if you say the intermediate earthquakes, the 6.5 Francisco San Francisco earthquakes, uh, MW give 0.6.5 and we give 6.3. So in Hikia Julia earthquakes, it also gives 6.0, we provide 5.7. So also uh, if we give the Tezpur earthquakes, it is 4.3 in MW, uh, MW it is 4.7, we provide 4.3. So there is a difference, significant difference in case of smaller earthquakes, 
And in the intermediate earthquakes, we also have in some differences up to 0.2. But in the bigger earthquakes, also we have a difference of 0.1. So remember, these differences are, are significant because 10 times it will be 32, uh, one magnitude scale change, it will give 32 times. And even this scale represents a better terms, better, rep better representation of the energy. Therefore, it has much more sense. Also consider the global seismicity, not the Southern Californian seismicity. So MW scale based on Southern California seismicity, but MWG based on global seismicity. So here we consider the global tectonics, not the only Southern California tectonics. So MWG is a better representation of energy than MW. So this, uh, in, uh, so this scale developing develop scales may perhaps will better uh, it connects the source process in a better way because it is a develop from the first few cycles of P wave because uh, from the first few cycles of P waves, so that is the body wave magnitude, so it represents the source in a better way as compared to the MW. So this DMG, DM scale that is MW is expected to relate more closely with both high and low frequency ground motion because it is a function of both MB and M0. Because uh, MB, uh, the 1.36, by 12.68 minus, uh, you know, 12.68, uh, the MWG scale is connected with the MB. So which is first few cycle of P waves. The formulation, the formulation, uh, let me go to back. The formulation, uh, actually, let me, uh, yeah. This formula, 1.36 log of M0 by 1.36 minus 12.68, it is connected with the MB, connected with MB. So this is a, this 1.36 minus 74. This is a function of MB, also function of moment. So this function of both M and B. So therefore, it will represent. It, it is closely can, uh, It is related more closely with both high and low frequency ground motions. So it is also useful for rapid determination of seismic moment from emergency purpose, but not for higher earthquakes. So now we have just, you know, for, for some tutorial, we have just tried to find out how it is different in the magnitude conversions. So we find it is very impact in catch of uh, conversion also. In, in smaller earthquakes, there is, a, uh, there is a difference between the scales MWG and MW.4. And in the bigger earthquakes also, we get some, you know, some type of some variation up to 0.4 in catch of nine, Nine in case of MS to MW conversions, if we convert the MS to MW or MS to MWG, there will be a difference 0.4. And if we convert MB to MW and MB to MW D G, then there will be con there is a difference between 0.4. So this analysis will influence on the seismicity parameters. So we find out how this seismicity parameter vary with respect to uh, seismicity parameter vary on the on using the MW or MWG scales. We, uh, we found the B value will change around 25%, A value will be changed at 15%, and MC will be changed at 20%. This is a case study for Northeast India data. It may vary with respect to the different reason. So now why this, uh, this scale should be used? Uh, I think this is the best magnitude scale for measuring all over the over the earthquake size from the smaller, intermediate, and bigger, all the earthquakes can be measured. Not for the bigger earthquakes, there is no any, uh, yeah, not for the bigger earthquakes only. So it is me, it is the best measure, single measure of, of overall earthquake size. And it is the best representation of energy because we have used the global earthquakes, so many big, earth, big global earthquakes in terms of energy. We found these earthquakes are very much, uh, this magnitude scale is very much closely connected with the energy. And it is also based on global seismicity because we have represent the global earthquake data. So, and this MWG scale is also applicable for crust and entire magnitude range. Entire crust means it is also covered the shallow and the deeper earthquakes also, earthquakes. And magnitudes means all the small intermediate bigger earthquakes, this scale is applicable. Whereas MW is only applicable for shallow and the bigger earthquakes. It fills the gap of long period and short periods because this scale is covering, consider the first few cycle of P waves, also consider the moment, seismic moment. So seismic, therefore it consider the long period, also short period. So MW scale remove the constancy problem of MW. 
So in MW preparation, there is a there is a constant values was put before developing these scales. So this problem will be not there in this scale. So it is does not saturated, but this same thing it is happening with the MW scale also will not saturated. This scale will also not be saturated. So it can be estimated from the geology geological observations. It can be tied to plate notions and recurrence relations. So this much is uh, from my, our side for 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 representation of earthquake magnitudes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rangit Das, for making such a very interesting and comprehensive presentation. And um, like your presentation and research is giving us hope and encouragement to all of us to look into the basics. Very often we feel that most of the things have been already done and the fields are saturated. But uh, through your research, you have shown to all of us one can look into the basic things which we normally take it granted and take it they are standard but you have shown uh, very nicely how one can uh, further improve the existing ones and i i know uh, your discussions uh, sometime when we were uh, here in ruki uh, that the challenge that you faced to publish your research because you were contradicting the well established well accepted theories so we are very proud of you and uh, i'm uh, very happy to inform all our delegates that uh, Dr. Ranjit Das has uh, done PhD from our department, Department of Earthquake Engineering, IIT Roti, under the guidance of uh, Professor M. L. Sharma and uh, Professor H. R. Vasan. Uh, in fact, they will be going to be our panelists now. And uh, before uh, we start our panel discussions, I would like to brief our uh, panelists so that we can have effective interactions with uh, our panelists. Uh, uh, our, uh, as I mentioned, our panelists are going to be Professor H.R. Vasan and Professor M.L. Sharma, along with the Dr. Ranjit Das. Uh, I'm just uh, briefing to Professor H.R. Vasan. Professor uh, Vasan is former Emeritus Fellow, ex-professor and ex-head Department of Earthquake Engineering, IIT Ruti. He is also a former president of Indian Society of Earthquake Technology. He has teaching experience for 40 years and research professional experience for over 45 years. He has successfully guided six PhDs and 26 MTech dissertations and published over 85 research papers in three, four international journals and conferences. He authored one book and two book chapters. He was awarded ICET Life Fellowship and he is also a member of several other societies. His specialization uh, includes in seismology, seismic hazard and risk assessment, seismic networks, regression relations, and pattern recognition. He had the honor of being the founder organizing chairman in 2004 for all IITs and chairman JAM 2005 for IIT Ruti. Brief introduction, I welcome Professor H.R. Vasan. And our other panelist is Professor Amal Sharma. Uh, he is the professor at Department of Earthquake Engineering, Institute of Technology Ruki, India, with over 35 years of experience in teaching and consultancy. Sharma has rendered expert advice to more than 500 engineering sites regarding seismic hazard and risk assessment. His long association with strong promotion program of Department of Sciences has resulted in the development of ground motion prediction for Himalaya. He initiated the quick early warning system approach for disaster mitigation and management in India. Based on his contributions towards disaster mitigation, with the ACE Aria IPR Disaster Prevention Award in the year 2012. He was president of Indian Society of Earthquake Technology during 2018 2019 and head department of earthquake during 2012 to 2016. With brief introduction, now I invite 
uh, our panelists, Professor H R Basar and Professor M L Sharma, along with uh, um, Dr. Ranjit Das. Welcome, sir. Welcome you all. So I, I request our uh, panelists to make initial remarks so that uh, delegates uh, can um, take part in the discussions. Uh, before I request uh, Professor Vasan to initiate the uh, discussions, let me tell that I am a student of Professor Vasan and Ranjit Das is a student of uh, both of us. So <laughs> that's a, a great opportunity to discuss with the guide and the student both uh, this time. Uh, Professor Vasan uh, may initiate. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we have just uh, listened to a very interesting talk uh, by Dr. Ranjit. Now, uh, we all know that uh, earthquake phenomena is a very complex phenomena. Uh, and uh, it has variations due to its occurrence patterns in terms of size, distance, depth, yeah. source, source type, rupture. And so there are different occurrence patterns are there. And then after the occurrence, then you have the observational part is there. And there are a lot of different I hope my voice is okay, uh, is audible. Yes, sir, please continue, sir. I okay. then, then it comes the observational differences. So one has to, one has to observe for the, uh, for the amplitudes, its vibrations, and we use so many instruments. Uh, uh, I think Mudit Srivastava has to uh, mute it still, sir. Yes, done. So then there are observational differences are there in terms of the number of uh, different instruments being used at different distances being measured, <coughs> etc. So in order to faithfully represent the complex phenomena variations and the observational differences, we all know that one magnitude scale is not sufficient and that's why more than one magnitude scales have been devised, invented and they proposed. And as has been explained, I don't, I will not go into detail, the ML magnitude, MB magnitude, MS magnitude, and then MW magnitude. So this MW magnitude, although it's a better and uh, representation and it's an improvement over the earlier known ML, MB and MS magnitudes, but as has been uh, shown by Dr. Ranjit that MW has been from the substitution process of the MS magnitude and the energy and so, and the log of M naught relation with the energy and the MS. So with these substitutions, Henson Kanamori proposed a new scale uh, in terms of uh, log of M naught, not in terms of the amplitude. So which definitely is an improvement over the earlier scale. It removes some of the problems of saturation and other things. But since MW has been tied to the surface wave magnitude MS, which is tied to ES, so the limitations of that surface wave magnitude and those relations, they naturally come to MW also. So MW, although there is an improved scale, but it also got some limitations because it was derived from the relations of MS with log of M net and MS with, uh, and MS with energy. So seeing those, uh, in order to further improve and remove those bias coming due to the basic MS magnitude in MW. So this new scale MWU has been proposed and as has been explained that it, it is based on the empirical relations derived uh, using 
लार्ज नंबर ऑफ सेस्मिक मोमेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन लार्ज नंबर ऑफ एनर्जी इवेंट्स ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड दीज ऑब्जर्वेशन आर टेकन नॉट फ्रॉम वन रीजन फ्रॉम ऑल ओवर द ग्लोब रिप्रेजेंटिंग डिफरेंट टेक्टोनिक्स रिप्रेजेंटिंग डिफरेंट डेप्स एंड एवरीथिंग एंड डिफरेंट रीजन आर देयर एंड बेस्ड ऑन द ऑब्जर्व लार्ज नंबर ऑफ earthquakes data in terms of seismic moment energy and like that so mw has been uh, proposed and th so this mwg since it is based on the observed values of the seismic moments and the energy of uh, small intermediate and large magnitude earthquakes it has been shown and as is expected it is an improvement over the mw scale which was just tied to the ms scale and the and those relations is there so as he has also shown that uh, for the very large earthquakes mwg value is higher than the mw value but for smaller earthquakes lower earthquakes mwg value is lower than mw so mw gives an overestimate for there is a cut off a threshold value that is around 7.9 or 8.0 for all earthquakes more than equal to 8 and above mwg will be higher by 0.1 or 0.2 but all earthquakes lower than 8.0 7.9 or below so mw will give a higher estimate by 0.1 or 0.2 as compared to mwg so for larger earthquakes mwg is a more realistic estimates and also it represents well and removes the bias for the lower and intermediate magnitude also and so mwg should be preferred preferred over mw in calculation of seismic hazard estimates and other seismological studies so these are my opening remarks for this thank you thank you, thank you, thank you sir uh, professor anmalgan is uh, raising hand so before we go for that uh, very quick comment of uh, my Uh, uh there were uh, uh, two things uh, which uh, uh, ranjit has uh, done uh, one was to look into the regression analysis part where one of the dependent parameter was treated as independent parameter so uh, that was one of the thing uh, uh, what i mean by this is that the dependent parameters are always taken as uncorrelated from the dependent parameter and they are taken from the observed data but here he has taken that as a constant so it was a conflict of dependent and independent parameter while doing the regression uh, that was number 1 uh, the other is the constant was not considering the physical process involved in this because every area every region is having a Uh, different kind of uh, stress regime, and and uh, it it depends on that stress regime that the stress drops behavior comes out to be different for different uh, uh, earthquake processes. So that he has not uh, considered. So these are the two comments while uh, making uh, this uh, uh, new uh, scale. The third is uh, that uh, uh, Ranjit, uh, can you? Uh, do some work on that because we are taking only the few cycles of uh, primary wave uh, yes, p waves uh, can you change it or rename it uh, to the uh, signatures of the source taken into consideration in terms of primary waves to define the magnitude because unless you take the whole signature of of p wave Or, or or the primary wave to uh, give the i mean you are giving the higher magnitudes also so that signature part should also be uh, considered in this so your comment on this and then we will go to uh, professor ambasgan and then to uh, dr sajan uh, yes sir okay, this please. we can look in the future in the future we can say yes we have to take the uh, signature the full signature of this uh, not 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 few cycles so that the whole uh, i mean the energy release the full, full rupture process has taken place and then we uh, say the magnitude uh, estimation yes professor anbasgan uh, good evening to all of you so uh, it's a wonderful presentation so i am really happy that uh, our people surface in the 
global level scale of a, a contribution in the, the moment magnitude. So I do have few, uh, I mean, the uh, clarification. So in the figure number, uh, slide number 15. Uh, so uh, Das, can you uh, go to the slide number? Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 please share, share the screen. Yeah, so this is the screen, sir. No, you have not shared it yet. You have uh, to uh, share it. Yeah. Uh, share how to? Down uh, in the bottom, you, uh, you must be looking uh, yes, at yes, sir. a green button. Yeah. Is it shared now? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, so next, uh, next slide. Uh, next, next, next. Yeah. So here actually uh, the ES and the MW relations are predominantly used for uh, the old MW scale, which you are well highlighted. And you also highlighted that the stress stop and the stiffness uh, plays a significant role okay, where the conversions are happening. Okay, so uh, did you study the effect of this uh, stress stop and then the stiffness variation, how it affects these two uh, parameters? uh not yet these things actually i have not further you know this uh, we can study these things as stiffness parameter variation uh these things has not i have not studied still okay the second actually uh, you are well highlighted the, about the 16 and 16.1 so uh, this 10.7 is uh, just a conversion or uh, i was not uh, getting that point actually maybe i missed uh, 10.7 basically coming from this, uh, you know, the substitutions of uh, this equation one and equation two. Basically, equation mathematical three. jugglery. No, no, no. Yeah. Nothing new in this. Just, no, actually, uh, if you look at the equation six and eight, okay, even yes, seven. So yeah. uh, these are all kind of uh, the similar kind of parameters. So the 10.1 yeah. is only to take care of the moment uh, of the unit conversion or. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But in that case, uh, why the other parameters are not uh, affected by the unit conversion? Uh, sorry, it is actually no, here. Two by not... third, for example, one point five should also uh, be affected by the unit conversion. No, uh, actually, this is a, a unique conversion of m, and I just uh, giving the background how this log e s is equal to one point five m s plus eleven point. It is de derived. Please, the equation please, please. one is given by Richter, equation two is also given by Richter, and he's, what he did, he substitute the equation one to equation two to get, a to get a relationship between the energy and the magnitudes, and he got the equation three. So this is now he considered the best equation for representing the energy with respect to the magnitudes. And then he substitutes some values on this equation to get uh, to remove the answer, uh, remove this uh, unsaturation problem of MS, just like equation four. No, no. Okay. The question, the question, Professor uh, Baskin is asking whether this equation nine is just the yeah. reproduction of uh, equation six or not. I mean, just the, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it just reverse taking place, and that's it. Nothing new. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah so that's new. good. So next, uh, on my observation on uh, this uh, MB and some clarification. So generally, this uh, MB is like a P waves are uh, predominantly affected by the uh, the water table too. Okay. Hmm. So when we convert uh, energy, basically you are explained well here when you talk about MS and the energy relation. But uh, when you talk about the MB and the energy relation, so uh, uh, do you also use the similar kind of things or it is uh, each earthquake energy has been estimated some other way using the waveform is considered or empirical reflections is used? We, we consider the independent earthquakes uh, which is uh, uh, developed from the velocity ground velocity. Consider that energy. For okay, so this. you energy you are estimated from the ground velocity. From the, yeah, ground velocity. So, which is not the, any empirical relation. No, no, no it, is, this it is basically an independent data. Data. And yeah. Okay. So, when you uh, talk about this uh, magnitude, so as you have shown the, all the global data, so the magnitude under the global data, what you are showing actually, this data may be recorded with amplification, without amplification kind of things. So, does it take care of uh, all those things or only the raw data has been used? 
no, no, actually amplification information I have not used. The raw data I use just the velocity and this this information I just use. Uh, but that is uh, basically also the function of the seismic uh, uh, site classification at a particular location, no? because your waves are amplified and the energies are different. Yes, because I, would of the like to come in, the I would like to come in for this. Uh, yes, that, that is basically the difference between a seismological station and a strong ground motion station. A strong ground motion station is just placed at the surface and there, there you get the site amplifications and all that. But for seismological stations, uh, you search those very remote sites on hard rock and, and uh, without hard rock, you are not uh, placing these uh, seismological stations. So the local site effects, uh, generally they uh, don't um, change the values because we search for uh, uh, putting the broadbands and the short even the short periods on, on hard rocks only. And if that is not available, then we uh, excavate and uh, go uh, one meter, two meter, five meters down to place the seismometer. So, I mean, that is the difference between seismometer placing and the accelerometer placing. When you place the accelerometer, you place it uh, in, uh, I mean, on the surface and then you uh, correct for the site characterization. But uh, in, in, in case of pure seismology, observational seismology, these stations are generally on the similar kind of uh, rock strata. Yes, sir. I appreciate your, uh, I mean, the uh, explanation. But as you know that uh, most of the stations, uh, they keep on uh, rock or they put a concrete bed and keep on that. So as you said, that one meter, two meter. Well, very few places, they define a station as a rock station. and. Uh, most of the place they write only is kind of uh, the details what is mentioned. Even in the Indian stations, uh, North India particularly uh, under your control and then rookie places and all. Many stations are just kept on the uh, congregating uh, some soil place and then the stations are kept are yeah, the boulders kind of This thing. kind of data is generally coming from observatories. Okay, so you say that it is rock rock data company. Yes, yes. I mean that that kind of. Uh, Corrections are not done uh, in, in, in seismological processing. That, that, that's what I mean. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. That's well, all from my, uh, my Well, may I Thank add you. that uh, the, the, these uh, the databases of NEIC, etc., they use the data from WWSSN stations and the international stations which are linked as per some specifications and those observatories are very international standard observatories and they, they their noise levels are so low are kept and only then so these amplification factors are, are do not enter into that yes uh, uh, my last so question how many data of indian data gone into this kind of uh, equations Rajit? Uh, uh, indian data are uh, actually i have to check because i have not seen that it is a global data total Probably maybe one or two it comes. Okay, it's not so much more. Put percentage into a, zero, one, zero, two, something like that. Yeah, uh, one or two is Less coming. It is not. Less than that. Yeah, <laughs> not not because we cover the whole world, so it is not coming from much more in, from India. Okay, sir. Anyway, it's an excellent uh, presentation, Das. Uh, so I hope you remember when you visited Earth Science, so we had some interaction. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, uh, uh, Dr. Sajal. Yeah, yeah. Your yeah, question, please. Sir, uh, before that, can I just add one point, sir, just related to the discussion. Actually, I am unable to raise my hand being the host. Just one point, sir, quickly. Uh, yes, yes. I think uh, uh, Dr. Ranjit Das is using the P wave. Uh, normally, P wave is not much affected by the local side effects, just to add. Yes, that, that's also the reason. Yes. Yes, Sajal, please. Uh, is how is this going to affect a normal designer like me? Like, um, this, I'm asking about how it is affecting the relaxed design. Uh, your sound is not so clear. I am unable to understand. Ranjit, are you getting the question? Uh, no, sir. Actually, I'm not having this uh, schedule. Can you please actually clear this? Actually, I'm not able to hear it properly. I'm not getting it properly. Please, uh, you can please. write in the chat box and I, I, I can reproduce that. No problem. Yeah, yeah please. Yes, uh, Dr. Harish Thakur. 
हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस या आई ऑल एब्सोल्युटली सर आई हैव ओनली वन क्वेश्चन लाइक द डायग्राम दैट यू हैव प्लॉटेड ना इन लॉग एम नॉट वर्सेस एम सो दोस आर स्ट्रेट लाइन बट वी कैन सी लाइक दोस प्लॉटेड डाटा इज इन ड्रॉप शेप लाइक इलांगेटिंग दिस ऑन 27th स्लाइड 27th स्टेट but uh, you can observe the trend here like uh, it is uh, non linear uh, curve will fit back from this to or like uh, this can be uh, uh, but, actually there is actually we are uh, we are not concentrated much more on the fitting how much fitting in the apps total data sets if you see in this figure 27 this is a good fitting up to 6 or 5.5 from 4.4.4.4.0 uh, to 5.5 in catch of uh, figure a 27 figure a yes, it sir. is a good fitting the 4 to 5.5 but if you for the bigger earthquakes if you consider 5. Point, more than 5.5 it is good for meet matching with the 5.5 to above in catch of ms b figure b see yes, this sir. so therefore it overall range it completely matching it is not connected because small earthquakes are are very much you know uh, useful for body waves can give a good information for the body small earthquakes less than 5.5 the bigger earthquakes intermediate earthquakes more than 5.5 to 7 8 the surface will give you the more information so in case of 5.5 and above and 5.5 and below so both the ranges in both the scales both the both the figures these scales are appropriately fitting Uh, Ranjit, it will be good if you can uh, explain to the audience this. Uh, what is the count? Fifteen to thirty-two. The blue one. So it is the number of dots. How many dots are bigger earthquakes? The dots are number of dot count. How much between fifteen to twenty? Uh, that is the number of bigger earthquakes. Are how many bigger earthquakes? Because uh, it is not possible to say one over. The, it is because of overlapping. So it means so, one blue point. One blue point yeah. is representing uh, around fifteen to thirty-two counts. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. This is coming in that range, and this is because overlapping for the problem. So we have to give the counts. How okay. much bigger? Okay. Thank you, uh, Olympa uh, Baru. Uh, you want to ask something? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, good evening, Professor Watson, Professor uh, Sharma, and Professor Jakka. Uh, uh, it is. It's uh, really nice to see my professors after such a long time. So. Uh, Uh, Dr. Uh, Ranjit Das, I am uh, Dr. Olimpa Boro from uh, Department of Civil Engineering, NIT yeah. Silchar. Uh, so I have two questions. Um, first of all, my first question is, uh, how did you identify the first cycles of the P wave? Uh, and uh, my second question is, uh, on slide number twenty-four, you had uh, given an equation, and also on slide number twenty-three, you had given an equation. You may you said that uh, on slide twenty-four that uh, it uh, because of this equation uh, this uh, scale does not saturate so could you just explain to me how you made sure that the saturation did not uh, happen uh, actually yeah uh, so for how we estimate the first few cycle of p waves if we consider the less than 3 seconds in the seismic signal then if i uh, try to find out what is the maximum amplitude of the uh, before the less than 3 seconds before 3 seconds so we pick up that that is the things okay And, and on, second one yes on slide 24 uh, could you please go to slide mm. 24 uh yeah uh yeah please 24 yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, uh point number 6 uh, at the end uh, it you have written that uh, which does not saturate your scale you're saying that it does not saturate so could you please explain how did you make sure that it does not saturate uh, see Uh, because if we estimate for the bigger earthquakes, uh, because uh, MS saturate means it goes uh, 8.2 uh, be before 8.2, it is not giving a, it does not above get increases the value. If we do, if we improve this uh, the value of moment, you will not get the improved value of M. 
then it is saturated at the particular point it is saturated is not improving so but here if you put the value of moment increasing value of moment you will not stop it will improve okay. yeah that that was seen uh, when a magnitude of 9.1 gave uh, mwg as 9.2 yeah yeah. Yeah. So, yeah you can see that uh, that that's the best example to show that yes yeah yes oh, it be, yeah so it is not changing so if there are any uh, other questions uh, uh, and, we can and, and further on. one can see from the graph also that uh, this line doesn't bend uh, if the scale uh, is is saturating at some end then this like uh, ml ms and ms then for higher yeah, magnitude, yeah. this uh, this uh, slope tries to flatten out and becomes uh, uh, towards the horizontal. So that doesn't happen in this MWG. So that's why yeah. from the graph also one can see it doesn't uh, saturate. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. So I want to yes. I want to clear one thing. Yes. So that even though this here our intention is not to make a good car fitting in the data set of body wave or moment or MS to M0. So our target is the body wave range that is the four less than five and MS range, which is more than 5.5 above, it should be perfectly fitting. So that is what we are testing. This figures one can assume oh, these are not good fitting. We are, we are not checking the best fitting line here. We're just trying to find out how much it is applicable range may that is the what i we are we are trying to find out okay uh, so uh, because the time is running fast and uh, uh, before uh, we close this um, and and go to uh, professor ravi uh, i would just like to have one comment that uh, on another front uh, our team uh, led by uh, Dr. Das is fighting for uh, and, and, and guided by uh, Professor Vasan is uh, uh, fighting for uh, the uh, non-linear um, uh, analysis uh, that uh, um, uh, Ranjit, conversion. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Ranjit will tell. And we are facing a lot of problem from those who have been uh, using those methods for a long, long time, but uh, there, there were mistakes. So these things happen between the groups and between the uh, regions and between countries and maybe uh, two, three parts of the world. So uh, I may request all the audience that this is one of the uh, finest thing which Ranjit has given uh, this uh, MWG scale. And uh, I, I, I uh, respect it. And uh, we uh, request you to kindly make use of this so that uh, people start using this uh, outside also. People have uh, uh, doing this. It, it, it is the most uh, uh, downloaded paper. And uh, therefore, I, I request all of you who are here as audience to kindly start using MWG DAS scale. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I, 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 I'm also, I'm yes. also requesting. Is, Professor, uh, Ravi, Professor Ravi, all from us uh, for you. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you, sir, for uh, nicely um, managing the pa panel discussions. And I also thank uh, Professor H.R. Vasan, sir, for uh, nicely giving the expert uh, summary of uh, the entire work. Uh, and also on behalf of uh, ISET uh, and the Department of Earthquake Engineering, IIT Roorkee, I would like to thank our today's speaker, uh, Dr. Ranjit Das. He has really come up with a new scale, and which is really wonderful uh, and astonishing work. And hope uh, we will all start uh, using this. And uh, at the end, uh, I would like to also thank uh, our uh, delegates for uh, participating in the panel discussions and attending this uh, webinar. And also like to thank our ISET staff and uh, students, uh, particularly uh, Mr. Saiket, who helped me in uh, arranging this uh, webinar online. Thank you one and all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay.